Well, I don't know if you guys remember this car or not, but this car was reviewed by me and a couple other Panther platform guys a few months ago. These cars somehow seem to keep ending up back in my hands. When people find out that I really do care for these cars and I love everything about them, they want somebody that cares for them to be working on them. This is a signature L series trim package, THX audio system, six-disc six disc CD changer in the back. It's got the passenger front seat controls from the center console in the rear, right here. It's got the volume up, channel change, everything going on here. Heated seats controlled from the passenger door panel, both sides back. This one has a water leak. It smells like mildew. It's been sitting for a number of years. The customer decided he didn't want it anymore. He's got some new stuff like a new Mercedes and things like that. He wants to get rid of it. Uh, it's been sitting, so he pulled it out, put some Continental tires on it, brakes, rotors, had all that taken care of, and then, well, just like in true fashion, people seem to die out on their projects and what they're trying to do, and it sat for a little bit longer. Well, it's back. It's got some little spots on it here and there where a little bubbly rust spot. There's a little spot inside here little bubbly rust spot be pretty easy to clean up I'm, uh, I'm actually gonna take care of it while it's here I'm gonna get this car running back tip-top shape everything works the navigation system works right now after a hard reset um, AC works engines quiet 92,000 miles on it uh, fronted heating uh, front heated and cooled seats motor super quiet I had to turn the volume down and do a voiceover because it's just so loud in the shop. There's so much music playing around me. You know what YouTube is going to do. They're going to demonetize the video if I don't. The vehicle at this point is running really good. I had to let it run for a little bit because the battery needed to be charged. I'm just showing you the sticker here. Um, 114 of 21. And it still had 3,000 miles left on the oil change. Basically what I was getting at when I was talking in the video is uh, basically saying... You know, just because you don't run the vehicle and you don't put miles on it doesn't mean that you can neglect changing the oil. That's why they give you a time schedule as well. That's why it all doesn't just boil down to how many miles you put on the vehicle. The vehicle sees load cycle, heat cycle, how many key starts, how many miles have been put on it, idle time. And that's how it will determine whether or not the oil needs to be changed. Now, this vehicle has been sitting since January 14 of 21 with barely any miles on it. You know, it's was driven to the place to have tires and brakes and stuff put on um, it sat for three and a half year or three years and then again sat for another six months after the tires and brakes and everything were put on it and it had the oil change so just because you don't put miles on your vehicle doesn't mean that you just choose to not change the oil because the additive package does wear out it does fall out of suspension there are definite downfalls to not running the vehicle and short tripping it the miles that were put on this weren't very much and they were short tripped so there's uh i don't know 33 3500 miles or something like that left on this oil right here i'm pointing at the hood latch last time we seen this vehicle which i'll cover this at the end how i know this vehicle uh previously is that that hood latch was all banged up there wasn't a hood latch there it was all so they must have ordered some kind of ebay hood latch or something and had it installed because it's all together right now it's whoever put it on did not adjust it correctly so i'm actually going to have to go through and adjust it a little bit better but really it honestly needs to be replaced again because that mechanism is so screwed up the spring on the front part right there is not wanting to return it properly it's uh it's wore out you know it's old it's from 2007 so yeah i eventually do end up getting it to work right when i get a pair of pliers out bend everything correctly but the spring is still wore out and it does need to be replaced so I've got the hood latch fixed somewhat. I greased it up a little bit more, but the spring right here is lazy. This spring that keeps tension on this one, and once it pops open, it's kind of lazy. See, it's not one to like push it back out all the way. But it does work, even when it's closed. You can still reach your hand underneath there. It pulls up a little bit. Even if it was to go in like all the way, you can still pull the handle 
and it's enough to get in there so say you go to pull it here and it's not popping out you can actually put your hand right there and touch it and it'll pop out enough to grab it but right now that'll have to do because and then it's getting caught lifting off of this here But for the most part, it's all working. Now right, let's continue on. Let's get it all shut down and get all this pulled out of here and all the shit cleaned off of it so we can get to working on it. To get that front part of that cow right here is these long Phillips looking screws. And one here and one here. And then you just unsnap that. It's right there and right there. And then basically, if you look down in here, you can see somebody's already siliconed this. But they're saying water's still getting in here anyway. You can't just silicone the back of this. You have to silicone the whole tray, not just the back. It needs to be all of it. So now what we're going to work on doing is we're going to work on pulling all these bolts. This, this tray actually comes out of here. This, 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 this this get all these out of here like eight mil and ten mils Just pull every bolt that you can see in here out and then let's pull this tray out of here i think i've got them so i think i've got them all i've got uh, i might be missing one what the fuck? i know i'm missing one somewhere where is it i've got to be missing at least one So I did, uh, I did get them all out. I needed a little pry tool to kind of work around all the surfaces. And I pried this area here underneath to get it up off this bracket. I pried this over here and then it all started coming out. It looks like it was sealed. I don't know. We're gonna reseal it though because it doesn't look like it was sealed very good. We'll see. New super heavy, heavy, heavy bead ran around it. And I'll put the cover back on. I actually wiped it all down with brake clean real good. A lot of brakes, uh, dust, stain and stuff, you're never going to get rid of that completely. Clean it off the best you can, run a bead of silicone around it and put your cover back down let it cure. You could, if you felt froggy, go ahead and throw a bead of silicone around the lower cover as well. Clean it off and bead it up. So I clean it up and add a little scratchy texture surface to it. And then I'll put a real light thin bead so it can actually have a layer on it as well. All right, I got a thin bead around that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it together. And there it is, completely sealed all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and put all my bolts and stuff back in there. And then I put a little dab of silicone where each one of the bolts go. So when I screw everything back, it sucks it up. Now that we've got the cowl all put back together and stuff and that's nice and sealed up, give it time to dry, we're going to go around to the back. I'm going to show you a couple more areas that block up that do end up causing water leaks. Water can drip down inside the door channel, get in the floor, get up under areas and stuff that it's not supposed to be. Right here in this corner where I start blowing this air gun, there's a bunch of buildup. That channel's covered. It's uh, plugged up about the first inch and a half, two inches down that little uh, 90 degree or whatever you want to call it 45 going down and there's a channel that goes all the way to the bottom of this rubber seal and it actually will sh it will channel water out of there as you're driving to go down the channel of the door and drip out of the bottom but there's all kinds of junk inside this thing it's all plugged up down that I pulled some of it out already and um, now we're gonna blow the rest of it through because I ain't gonna be able to get all that out of there so now here I've got it all blown through all the debris and stuff is out of that channel I'm gonna wipe it down a little bit to try to get some of that rough texture to, you know, the rougher it is right there, the more it's gonna slow water from actually getting through there. And uh, I wipe it all down some more, blow air and stuff down through there, get everything out just so it can drain properly. I've seen issues with that in the past. And also, you'll see here along this edge, a couple of the Phillips screws that hold the trim panel on, they actually broke. And there's water track marks and stuff back behind it. So what I did was I pulled all of the areas back, cleaned all the rust off the bolts inside the hole where it goes into that outside 
like dress up piece for the signature covering and uh, I put some 357 inside the holes all along the bolt threads and then all along the trim from one end to the other sucked it all back together and then actually took electrical tape and ran it around and it was able to hold it just fine while everything dries and then I'll go back with a permanent marker and color that gray area to match the color of the the top but at least it'll stop that water from getting back behind that door channel and sitting on that uh, underneath that cover rotting it away same thing on this other side here show you that it is completely plugged up as well twigs and sticks and everything built all the way up through that first two or three inches of that channel causing water to back up get underneath that vinyl top and stuff it just it's, it's bad when uh, you know people don't do the maintenance stuff they don't clean up and it can't drain properly so I'm gonna do that for them so now we've got the vehicle in the air and I'm looking at these power steering lines. It looks like the oil pan's leaking and the accessory driver is kind of slinging that oil around and it makes it look like the power steering lines are leaking. But the power steering lines are typically good to replace on these anyway every couple years because they rot out pretty easy. Uh, the, that's the accumulator for this, or the dryer for it. And that plastic cover really should be put out, pulled off of there and then zip tied to the housing because that cover will actually trap moisture and stuff inside there and cause that receiver dryer or that accumulator to actually rot out but it looks like it's actually newer on this one like somebody's changed it at some point so that oil right there some people would think is coming from the front cover it's typically not the case on these panther cars it typically comes from right around the oil pan area and if you look at my previous videos you can see that I actually do um, show you a trick to replacing the oil pan gasket when I did that on my own personal car what I thought was a little bit odd on these is the fact that this car doesn't have the aluminum control arms like my signature does this has the steel ones like on the p71 cop car see i'd never seen that before on one of these i don't know if somebody changed it at one point and just went back with what was cheaper or what they thought was better or maybe this car was actually made with that but it doesn't seem right to me to be honest with you it seems like somebody changed it at one point and went with these instead of the actual aluminum ones that you would normally find on a lincoln to keep them lighter the steel arms are more rigid and better but it's not the ones that I'm typically used to seeing on the actual town cars. I'm just kind of going through pointing at all the suspension here. There's a lot of rust underneath this vehicle. So now eventually I go through and I try to blow as much of the loose rust and garbage and cobwebs out from underneath this thing. Wipe down as much as I can underneath it to kind of get it as clean as possible. And uh, give it back to the customer you know, better than how it came to me. We're just kind of going through and just picking at the paint and stuff like that so now I'm gonna be quiet this next segment you're just gonna kind of see me going underneath it just pointing things out um, just layers and layers of rust underneath this thing as nice as this car is that really surprised me how rusty some of the more metal components are that don't have a lot of protection the body itself was great other than like uh, the rocker panels there were some decent sized holes in the rocker panels on the driver's side but they weren't huge I mean it's nothing that couldn't be fixed but it's definitely a concern, you know. So now let me be quiet and we'll just observe as I kind of walk under this thing and look at all the different areas. So I said that I was going to be quiet and just observe the rest, but you guys probably wouldn't like just watching me flake away rust. Just kind of pointing out here that a lot of multiple layer surface stuff, nothing has kind of went through the vehicle. Um, and I apologize too, I'm actually uh, driving home with this thing in front of my face on the stand while I'm driving and I'm just kind of talking and peeking at the camera as I'm driving out in the middle of nowhere right now. Uh, just a lot of flaky rust everywhere. Nothing really leaking under the car other than the oil pan. And you know what, it wouldn't be hard to kind of get some of this under control. But some of you know that have been around rust and old vehicles that once it starts, and it gets to the point where it's building multiple layers it's kind of hard to get it under control at that point I notice here it doesn't have the factory shocks on it anymore or at least not the factory shocks like on my signature um, this is a signature L so it's I think six or nine inches longer than the, the standard uh, town car and it'll have different suspension components it's gonna have more of the heavy-duty type steel lower control arms what i'm pointing out here is this evap box in the back the actual bolts or the little nuts like to rot off the studs in the back 
and they'll literally just snap right off of this thing. And what ends up happening is the evap box will fall and it'll drag the ground as the town car is going down the road. Here I'm just kind of spinning the vent for the rear end just to make sure it's clear and it's bleeding off properly and there's no debris in the way. Uh, looked like it was doing fine to begin with. As I move my way back up the vehicle, I'm kind of touching exhaust components and things like that where I'm seeing multiple layers of rust that's probably going to be a problem in the future. Um, I would just replace the entire exhaust system on this to be honest with you. I wouldn't even try to piece anything in. Uh, so, overall, you know, not a bad looking vehicle underneath. It has a lot of life left. Just again, flaky rust on the block because um, it is a different uh, type of used vehicle. It sits a lot. Uh, it does have a brand new transmission. It's only a couple years old. Uh, I did talk to the owner. He did confirm that right. it started slipping. So instead of just rebuilding it or whatever, he actually went and bought a new transmission from Ford and had it installed. So it's a new transmission. That's why it looks so new. It's only a couple years old. Just pointing out how nice the material and stuff is still. The sheen is all still there. That's how it was one of the first indication in the factory Ford stamping instead of like a Jasper rebuilt or reman or something like that stamp they usually put on the side of them. It still has the Ford stamping on it, like, you know, new. Uh, oil pan leak right around the back right there, obviously. And then again, I kind of moved back up to the front and I'm pointing at the power steering lines because a lot of people mistake the oil pan leak because the pulley's slinging it all over the place for a power steering line issue. But it's with these power steering lines, because of how easy it is for them to rot out, I would just replace these power steering lines like every three or four years just because they do really start to rot out. You can't save these things unless you coat them when you get them brand new. Steel control arms because of the longer body being a signature L. Uh, it is more of a executive limo type than just a regular signature like I own. So they had to go to the heavier duty suspension. Pointing out looks like bushings and stuff for the front. Uh, sway bar is actually still good but a lot of the paint and uh, like the top layer of rust flaking off. I'm about to move down the passenger or the driver's side of the vehicle but right while I'm here I noticed that the um, drain for the evaporator box needs to be cleaned out because I start I see a little debris right there plugging it up and sure enough as soon as I shot down inside it everything started to clear out and water started dripping so that was probably part of why the water was ending up in the passenger floor I did it a few times because it kept draining and I seen a few more chunks of stuff actually come out of there. At this point, pretty much nothing else is coming out. Just blew it out to see if there's anything else in there that may come out. That's the exhaust from my uh, town car that you actually hear. I'm actually driving my uh, signature town car right now and it's got full catback exhaust all the way back, two and a half inch uh, pipes, uh, Flowmaster X pipe. I thought it was an H pipe, but it's not, it's an X pipe. And it's got Roush axle back exhaust from a five liter Coyote uh, modified to fit it. So it's more of a mellow sound, not so aggressive. just blowing everything off that I see rust flaking everywhere just every spot that has any kind of rust just blowing as much as I can off of it just to loosen stuff up get it out of the way give it less of an area for contact so water and moisture can't build up behind it blew a lot of material off the bottom of this vehicle where it was rusting. 
And you see the airbags there on each side. Yes, I did remember to deactivate the switch in the trunk to uh, raise it. I'm not one of those guys. So, lots of rust all over the place, just flaking off of there. I'm gonna get back at the rear end, get as much as I can off the other side. A lot of material came off. You can see when I'm done, the floor is just peppered with material that was kind of on here. I actually will put my vehicle in the air once a month, and I'll go through and I'll do all this. I'll just blow every crevice I can out. I'll look at every single spot where there may be some rust or something starting started, and I'll treat it right away. I'll get my angle grinder out. I'll grind the rust out right away. I'll put an acid base uh, neutralizer on it, let it set up. And then I'll actually, you know, undercoat it to make sure that area it can't do it again. So, there we go. Now the AC is dripping nice and even right out of the bottom where it wasn't doing it before. So, which tells me that AC was probably backing up in the passenger floor. Nice and ice cold. And this here was pulled so far away from the door where these couple little Phillips screws back here broke. It was letting water back inside the door and they were getting around the bolt holes. So basically I took a wire brush. I'll show you what I did. I took a wire brush and I brushed the threads where all these were, were this one, this one, and this one was broken. I brushed the threads real good and then I uh, 357 in the hole around the threads and then pulled everything back together and then stripped it from front all the way to back and then when I'm done I'll come back and I'll add some color to this so you can't even see this it won't even be able to be seen and it'll never leak around that again I hard set I re hard reset the nav for this thing because it was freezing up and it wasn't working before but now it is working I pulled the negative battery terminal, I put both of them together and I let the system completely drain the two terminals together. And then um, I hooked everything back up, the nav came back online, it actually shows the streets and everything. The passenger side climate control really wasn't working on this side, but it was it was kind of, it was weird. It would, it would act up and then it would start to back up, but after I hard reset I got the battery charged up, now all of a sudden everything's working perfectly fine. So I'm pretty sure at this point all the leaks are going to be fixed in this thing. It's just a matter now of letting everything set up. I'm going to run it down there and actually hand wash this car. Uh, and then I'll run it through the car wash next. But other than that, everything seems to be working fine. Now after you push the seat forward and you push back and forth with your butt. And you use your hamstrings to help pull the seat as you're pushing the button when these jam up. It'll start to move. And then when you go back, you use your legs, you push into the floorboard and push the seat back. And it will start moving forward and back when they start to jam up and get rusty on these when they sit a while. And then once you get them moving, move the seat all the way to the upright position. Go get some lube, some Panther Piss, PB Blaster, uh, WD-40, whatever you want. Freeze off and lube up them tracks where everything slides back and forth. And you'll get the seat moving again most of the time. See what I'm talking about under here? Now spray all the track and stuff down and get the seat moving again. You assist it and pull the seat all the way forward while you're pushing the button here. Take with your other hand and push. And then get to the back of the track and I'll spray the back of the track. Oh man, so much faster. 
way better than what it was before. Gotta keep working them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's working. It'll get there eventually. It's had to be sprayed off and maybe shoot some white lithium grease when you get everything nice and wiped down and freed up. Hit it with some white lithium grease or some brake slide. Hangs up right here. Oh, that time it didn't do it. It's fighting through. So that must mean that it's. Yeah, see, that must mean that it's it's trying to free itself up. It's actually working. So, we got that moving now. Or it wasn't moving before. This been this thing's been sitting for like three and a half years. So everything in here needs to be gone through and looked at and freed up. And well, now I've got all the door doors lubed up and all the seats moving free. Even the passenger seat was really bad from all the water leaking in, uh, like down the cowl and stuff like that, and coming down. It's like it froze up the track of the passenger seat as well. Now I've got that all freed up also. It's moving real good now. So, I'm going to take it down there, hand wash it, and get everything vacuumed out and wiped down on the inside. After all, she's only been sitting for three and a half years. Well, there she is. Three and a half years of dirt cleaned off of her. Got that door all nice and sealed back up now. All the tape and stuff where I was holding it all on, all that's off of it. It's already dry. I ran it through the car wash, everything's fine. Ran it through a hand wash, everything's fine. Directed all my water around the window to see if I can get anything to come inside the car. I couldn't get anything to come inside the car. The hood, if you look on an angle, you can see little tiny spots where it looks like tree sap or something has been on it at one time. So somebody's gonna wanna come along and really buff that hood real, real, real good. And then buff the rest of the body too because you can see little scratches and stuff throughout it. Got all the cob cobwebs and stuff out of the engine bay. Went ahead and detailed the whole entire engine bay. Wiped everything down. Literally took an air gun and blew around every single injector, every single connector. Washed all the oil and stuff off the motor. All the oil and stuff's completely gone. Cleaned the battery. Uh, dielectric breached the terminals. Just really did a good job and just cleaning every bit of accumulation off inside this engine that was here. Just out of this engine completely. Got all the stains and stuff and the bird shit from over the last three and a half years out of the top. Hey, it, it is by no means a 10, I can tell you that. But it's a damn good car. It's got a lot of life left in this car. A lot of life left. 92,000 miles. Yeah. All that stuff that was smeared all over the trunk, the stains, the tree spots. I scrubbed the hell out of that. Got all that out of there. Let's look at the inside real quick. Vacuum the carpet, wipe down all the inside, all the door jams around all the plates and stuff. Vacuum the seats, um, deodorized the evaporator and actually sprayed a chemical down in there to get rid of all the bacteria and stuff that may have been accumulated in the evaporator. 
Uh, basically used a cigarette smoke type deodorizer to fill this car up and bomb the living hell out of it until you couldn't stand next to the car because it was so bad. And then took it outside, let it all air out with the AC and stuff on, and then came back with a new car smell and bombed it again. And it smells like a brand new car. It smells like brand new leather inside there now, especially after I wiped everything down. Yeah, it turned out great. Really, really, really turned out great. Very impressed with how everything came out. All the little stains over here came out of the carpet when I was washing it. So, yeah. Just trying to take care of this guy. There's a story to this car that I'll tell you guys eventually, but uh, now is not the time. So I just want to say I appreciate you guys watching the video. Thank you for taking time to sit all the way through this. The Signature L is a very special car and a lot of people don't see them anymore. And I was asked by multiple people to do this video and document as much as I possibly can to show people this car. So leave your thoughts down low, please. Y'all be blessed.